But I had an easy question because, like I said, what the man was saying just a couple of minutes ago, if he could repeat it again, he took the witness stand and the judge asked him a question. And he went on about saying something about the government, you know, and so, if, you know, I, I don't want to paraphrase what he said, so if you want to, can you say it again, kind of what you said, that what you said to the judge on the stand? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, um, I, I, I was saying this when I was, it was pre-trial, so if, that, if you're talking to me, it was pre-trial and not, uh, not before a jury. Uh, he's asking me uh, if there's any chance that, uh, that I would plea out to, uh, you know, to... Uh, they were offering me something like 18 to 24 months. They ended up giving me nine years. I said, no, no, no. And I said, um, um, the, uh, I've tried to explain the law as I understand it, Your Honor. I said, but the government can put me away for as long as they want and cut my head off, but I will not bend to an unjust law. That was, okay. that was, and he said, said, the trial is set for blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right, right. Of course, he said the trial is set for blah, 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 because, I think if you said something else, you would have said, um, have a nice day, sir. Um, we're out of here. Everybody go home. Because well, I'd certainly, like doing, to know, I'd, certainly like to, I'd certainly like to know those magic words, I'll tell you what. Well, what you keep doing is you keep saying they, and what you keep saying is the government. When you keep saying, the, I heard you earlier, you were saying the government is corrupt, the government is this, the government is that, whatever, you know, some bad stuff about the government. And uh, honestly, the government is perfect. It's whole, it's complete. A republic form of government is uh, is wonderful. Uh, our government is the, probably the most magnificent government that ever existed on planet Earth. The only problem is, if you look at the definition of it, yeah. it's crap. There you go. Angela's going to say, we're going to have to start to hold the man who's running the government accountable. And we're going to have to hold him accountable for all his little minions that he's got acting as like just crazy dogs running around, peeing and pooping and scaring everybody because the government is wonderful. The government is whole and complete, a, a republic form of democracy, self-governing people. It's wonderful. The problem is, is that there's a man or there's uh, people who are running the government who are, who are, who are manipulating it for their own self-interest or they're, 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 you know, they're just totally tampering with what is a perfect instrument. They're just, they... As, as men and women, as there's a man who's ultimately in control of Coca-Cola. There's ultimately a man who's in charge of Microsoft. There's ultimately a man in charge of Apple. There's ultimately a man in charge of the United States government. And that man should be held accountable when he's allowing his employees or his agents to just run around and put a destructive product to the people. If it's Apple or Tylenol or or if it's Coca-Cola, that that man should be held liable. Like, you won't realize what you are allowing to, from your company being, you know, coming from your corporation to be you know, having intercourse with man and woman on planet Earth. You realize what you're doing to your fellow man. You realize that you're not controlling that which you're putting out into the public. You realize you're causing the public great harm by what you are putting forth. Do you realize why what you're doing is causing harm not only to legal persons, but it, that legal person, like Coca-Cola, is a legal person. But there's sometimes a legal person is also called a man or a woman. Then what, should we hold all of Congress responsible no, for giving can, the ability can, to print can, the money can, to a group of private uh, families? A Congress is a gang of monkeys or a gang of gorillas. Well, Aren't there? Literally, yeah, okay, that's, no, that's what a Congress is. A Congress is like a, like a gaggle of geese. It's like a gang, it's a gang of uh, chimpanzees or monkeys. No, you don't hold a Congress liable because that's ridiculous. It's, a Congress is a, is a what? You can't hold a pine cone responsible or a, you know, or a tree responsible. You, gotta, you can't hold a Congress as a All what? All the men and women a, that make up Congress. Right, the man or the woman, right. And obviously there's going to be a Speaker of the House, and obviously there's going to be a Senate Majority Leader. So obviously you're going to find out who is that man who possesses that title, and you're going to tell him, you better get your Senate tight. You better go get your House of Representatives tight, because we're going to hold you liable. Yeah, because they'll have you he, shot and killed. You know, they kill presidents ma'am, and get uh, away ma'am, with I am not, Ma'am, I am not shot and killed, and I've been saying <laughs> stuff to you. Okay, and you I haven't done saying, anything with the members of Congress yet, Carl. Okay, okay members no. of Congress, okay. But what I'm saying is, all I'm trying to say is, when, when you go to court, and the judge asks you the simple question, do you want to enter a plea? Absolutely. I want to settle 
all matters of controversy with my fellow man at all times. If there's any man who's going to claim I've done something wrong, that I'm guilty of something, that I owe a debt, I am here, I got my checkbook, I'm ready to pay every single man and woman on planet Earth anything that I may owe that is true, that is due, and is owed. I don't want to die and die with a debt on my conscience. I want to go from this world and be debt-free. I don't want to be guilty of anything that I've done anybody wrong. I want to settle all my controversies, all my debts as fast as I can. Now, who is the man or woman who's going to come before this open court the open form like they had in Greece, open form, open to the sky so God could watch, open to the whole universe. Who's going to come into this open form and claim I've done something wrong and is there some reason why if I've done something wrong, they didn't come forth to me on a private side like a week ago, a month ago, a year ago? Why did they wait till this moment? Is whatever reason they want to, I don't know. But if there's any man or woman who wants to come forth and say, I've done something wrong, I am here to pay every single dime I owe to any man or woman. Now, a government, that government's a what? I don't owe money to a pine cone. I don't owe money to a tree. I don't owe money to a car. But can I owe money to my fellow man? Yeah, a medium of exchange, because me, money's a medium of exchange. Currency just makes a one like trillionth of what money is. Money is a medium of exchange. I'm giving you information. Uh, you're giving me airtime. It, we just transferred money between ourselves. It had nothing to do with currency, it had nothing to do with PayPal, it had nothing to do with check. Money is a medium of exchange. Currency is like what you people would call paper or coin of the realm. That would be like metal. Money isn't what you people keep saying is currency. You keep getting it wrong. You know, money is a medium of exchange between me and my dogs. I feed them food, they bark when somebody comes up. I, they give me money. I give them money. It's a medium of exchange. It doesn't mean currency. So every time I hear people say, oh, money, the money, oh, geez. But you mean currency? You mean a coin of the realm? Is that what you're talking about? What we use to exchange instead of carrying 10,000 pounds of rice on our back to exchange it for a bowling ball? Yeah, okay. That, yeah, the amount of convenience of a debit card. Oh, yeah, that, that's, a, that, that's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing they created for us. But the big thing is what people keep saying, it's like this, this, this poor man keeps saying is, the government, the government, the government is evil. No, 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 no. The government's wonderful. The republic form of democracy ran by self government individuals. People in government are criminals. It's the man of right. It's, it's right. It's who are you right? And then the worst thing you do is that it's like when the government closed for business a couple of years ago in 2013 for three weeks or five weeks, nobody cared. Everybody said there was going to be looting in the streets. The federal government's going to close. I mean, Alex Jones, people were saying people are going to turn into zombies within two weeks, start eating each other. You better start getting uh, food supplies in the ground. I was like, holy cow. And then the government closed. Nobody cared. Some Vietnam vet, uh, World War II vets cared because they couldn't get into a World War II memorial and the Japanese and German tourists were pissed because Yosemite State Park was closed. National Park was closed. But other than that, Joe Average, we just kept going on with our day. So they realized, holy cow. Nobody gives a damn that the centralized government is closed. We've got to open them back up for business because you want us to. Nobody gives a damn if we function anymore. I don't. I think we probably function them. better with them closed. Yeah, we didn't even realize they were closed. Do any harm if they're closed? Right, and I think when Congress got together amongst themselves, it's like people aren't turning to zombies. The black people aren't looting in the streets. Nobody's going crazy. Uh, we know what, we've got to open up for business again real soon before uh, people realize, you know what? We really don't need you people, do you? That's you're just right. all hype. You're all fear. You, you scare yeah. everybody. You're all hype. You're, all, you're nothing. You're just a, like a paper monster. Hey, Carl, let's you're hear open. from Glenn. Glenn, what do you have to say to what Carl's saying? Well, when I, when I use the term government, I'm talking about the people who are representing government. I'm not talking about the the... the the established uh, order of our constitutional form of government, I have no problem with that. But what I'm talking about is when, when, when the opponent to Bill Bailey files a, a motion in court, they call themselves the government. And so that's the term, I, that's the, the, the means by which I use that term. Uh, I, call, I totally agree that the... Well, I'm trying to say they can call ahead. themselves... They can call themselves the pine cones but a pine cone, the pine cones, are still going to have to take a witness stand, point across the room, and say that I deliberately did something wrong, that I deliberately hurt Mr. or Mrs. Pine Cone. They could call themselves anything they want. They could call themselves the government. They call them, still a man or woman is going to have to come forth and say that you've done something wrong. It's the same thing. Like well, I understand. The easiest one to, to, to do is, is the, 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 when Al Gore 
of George Bush Jr. to the Supreme Court over the election in 2000. And the United States Supreme Court said, you know what, you, 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 you might be right, you know, Al Gore. Thousands and millions of chairs might have been hanging up on these election machines. But, um, and you, you'll realize the Supreme Court ruled this case in like three minutes. Because all the Supreme Court said to Al Gore and his team of attorneys and the thousands of trucks of the, the hanging chairs and ballots that brought from Florida up to Washington, D.C., all the Supreme Court flat out said is, do you have one man in the state of Florida with you who said that his vote wasn't counted, so his right to vote was denied because of a flawed machine? And they were like, all his teams of attorneys, like, uh, did anybody bring a man? Did anybody remember to bring the victim? Did anybody remember to bring the harmed or injured party? Um, no. So the Supreme Court said, until you find a man to come before this court, you have no standing. You have no case. Go back to Florida and argue in Florida because there's nothing we could do here without a victim, without a man, without an injured party. So if anybody wants to see the simplest case on planet Earth about a harmed, injured, accruable loss to a man, it's Gore versus Bush. It was over in two seconds. The Supreme Court just said, okay, Al, you got any man whose rights were denied to vote? Oh, well, look at all these thousands of chairs. Okay, you have one man who's going to swear that he was harmed, injured, or he accrued a loss due to a faulty machine. Well, um, uh, no, I guess one of my thousands and billion-dollar attorneys forgot that little aspect of law that is needed to move a case to a court. Yeah, I guess they did. I guess you overpaid for these attorneys. And that's exactly what all you guys are doing. You guys are just forgetting to bring up that one little fact that the Supreme Court said. You got a man over there on the other side that's making a claim with wrong, like, say, the people of, of California. Do you have any one of the people Anyone, just bring one of the people that said I've done something wrong. I got my checkbook, and I will compensate them. I'll tell them I'm very sorry, and I didn't realize what I did was wrong. And I didn't realize what I did accrued a loss, an injury, or harm to him or his property. I'm very sorry. If he told me this a week ago, we wouldn't have to be in court today. But okay, so no the, point the, is, the point is that they never bring a man to right. make a claim he against him. Right, right. you've got to keep telling him I want I, I, I'm sure I'm guilty. Guilty means you owe a debt. I'm sure I owe debt to so many people. It's not even funny. School teachers, doctors, you know, judges in the past that help me. I'm sure I owe so much to so many, it's not even funny. But well, we've got documentation here that came from uh, uh, the, the bank saying you paid taxes on a mortgage or interest on a mortgage. We've got documentation saying you uh, paid this and that and the other. What do you say then? Still the same thing, right? You Where's the man say, or woman you, that... You, you could say that, but it wouldn't be ethical to say that because you decided to get into bed, into course, with the second dimension, with the credit world, with the banking institutions. And this is what I tell people all the time. What's going to happen is somebody like me is going to show people, like, like say, Gus's girlfriend, how to pay pennies on a dollar for a debt, and she thought it was funny. And then she did it again to another credit card company, and she thought it was funny. And with all the credit card companies realizing that the United States people are catching on to this, they're going to do what they did to Cuba. When, when Castro came into power and said, no more usury fees because usury fees are against the Bible, no more usury fees because they're all Jewish bankers, and all the bankers said, fine, and they left Cuba. How, why is the Cuban economy the worst economy in the world? Because they don't have, like, the Jewish bankers. So go ahead and get rid of usury <laughs> fees. Go ahead and don't pay interest. Go ahead and don't pay taxes and be like Cuba. And then what's going to happen is the banks are going to leave the United States because we are tiny. We're tiny. We only got 300 million people here. Malaysia is almost the same size as the United States now. And most people who listen to the show can pull Malaysia out of the map. They're number four. We're number three in population. They're going to go over to India. They're going to go over to China. Or they're going to take on a continent like Africa. That's massive. The banks don't need us anymore. Okay? We're just like a – now we're a natural resource, uh, you know, for, for the world. We don't manufacture things anymore. We just produce timber and oil and coal. That's all we are. We're turning into a colony again. So if we don't play nice with these bankers and these credit card companies and these mortgage companies, they're going to leave. And we're going to yeah. turn to Cuba. No, we and don't. Oh, you don't think so? You don't nah, think so? Say, I don't no, think so because at all. Watch this. Just watch this because what they're going to do is they're going to say, we will come back if you get rid of the common law, if you turn into a cold, cold nation. If 
when a man owes a debt to the bank, the man can go to jail for pay, because he hasn't paid on a debt. And they're already starting to do that by putting people in jail for paying, not paying IRS taxes, for not paying, uh, they're trying to do it for student loans. They're trying to put people in prison for owing a debt. Mm-hmm. Because that, you can't do that to a man, but you can do that to a legal person. A legal person could have another legal person, like, incarcerated, but a man cannot, you know, a legal person, like a bank, cannot attack a man and say a creation of man cannot inca- put a man in a cage. That's ridiculous. How could what that's I that, That's bank? what I said before when I said status. If you know who you are in the grand scheme of things, it's a matter of status. But people don't right. understand that they're, they're, they are the creation of God. And all these legal fictions and all these legal persons are the creation of man. Mm-hmm. And, all, and all these, what you people would call yourselves a man, are being controlled by a legal fiction. And like I said, when you learn how to control the legal fictions, we live in a very unethical land. And what I'm telling you is people are going to wipe out their credit card debts instantly. Like I could tell by people who are really in a bind, and I'll make them wipe out their credit card debts instantly, their hospital bills instantly. And, they, and most people, I just hope that, you know what, they're just happy and they go on with their life. They don't teach other people how to do this because this is always like the last panic button when they're going to sell off your home and, and, and take garnish your paycheck and, and, you know, take everything away from you. And I'm not talking to people who have three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 McMansions and you're going to lose your home and you only made three down payments. You only made three payments of $10,000 and you want to keep a McMansion. I tell them, too bad. That's not your home. You still owe a debt. You owe a debt of a half a million dollars. You bought a Lamborghini and a Maserati and a Cadillac Escalade last year because you refinanced your home. That's not your home anymore. You gave it away to somebody else for those three cars sitting in your driveway and the ski mobiles. And you want, and you think that's your house? How is that your house? Didn't you just... How much money do you owe on it? How much money did you pay on it? So like I said, I don't believe in giving people freebies. Because when the banks find out that you guys figure out how to get everything for free, you know, they're going to say, you know what, we're going to come back when the common law is gone, when, when you people are begging your congressmen to get the, the, the banks back here up and running, and we'll sign over our uh, common law rights, and we'll uh, allow the banks to own land. And we'll allow, well, allow the banks to uh, They're going to uh, disagree to on that one, Carl. <clears throat> Always. I am going to disagree with you on that because I don't. I, I believe it's the banks. The current form of banking in this country is going to ruin this country, and it is. No, no, they, they, they're doing. I think they're doing what it is. Is I've never had a credit card in my life. I've never applied for a mortgage. I never applied for a loan. When you look at my name on, on the bank, I had the bank guy do it for a laugh. He says you don't exist. That's right. I don't exist in the second dimension. You folks decided to join over with the banks. Now, am I going to destroy the economy because I've never intercourse with the bank? No. Can a bank have any control over me? No. What's the bank having control over? People who decided to go into town, and they didn't go to the bush or the baker, the candlestick money, make up some money. They went to the banker. Well, that's because they've said, all been trained to do that from day well, why didn't one. You to, why, didn't you go, why didn't you go to your family for the money? The pro- well, you know, a lot of problem is that there's not full disclosure. Why didn't you go to your family first? Why didn't you go to your church first to borrow money? Why didn't you go to your neighbors to borrow money? Because nobody's going to loan you. Maybe they don't have any money to lend. Nobody's going to loan you. Nobody's going to loan. I want to loan my brother at time because I know he'll never pay me back. I'm not crazy. That's why your family didn't loan you money either. All right, Carl. Because they know they know you ain't going to pay back. Okay, we're going to cut it short because we're over time. Carl, All right, but I just wanted to say that. You're yeah, scheduled to be our guest speaker on September the 3rd, and uh, right. we will get into a, dis- uh, a lot of uh, conversation on that call. I want to get back to Glenn. Glenn, do you have anything to say or to wrap no, up? I, uh, no, I enjoyed uh, listening to Carl. Uh, we, we all have different views on, on different things, and his approach may work and uh, ours may not, so um, I'm very much open to that. Whatever works is uh, is 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 to me, of paramount importance. 